laterally, forward, back, whatever it is. Um, and it's simply whether your athlete wants to go right, left, hop, left, right, hop, or you have an athlete, maybe your corners, that just stand here, hop, that's a crutch test. Okay, getting them ready to move. I want, as an infielder, I want my feet hitting the ground as the ball's crossing the plate. Okay, so it's a, it's a timing thing. And if your athletes, if you train them, get them good at it, you'll they'll all be landing at the same time. Okay, a quick drill. Uh, I'm just gonna come here. One of these two doesn't no matter how many. So I get my athletes set up. Where they just stand just like this. I toss the ball up. I want their feet to land when the ball hits my hands. Simple. That's prep step. So we'll do a bunch of this. Get them all in sync. Prep step. That's all it is. Okay. But without that, standing still. How, how many times do you see your athletes get beat on balls in the hole? They're late. They got a bad angle because they're they're planted just like this. Waiting. Can't move from here. Okay, so that's the first thing is get them to understand what the prep step is, what it's used for, how to use it, how to do it. That simple drill. That's all you have to do. Like I said, toss the ball from here. Vary the height. Make them adjust timing on their feet. Okay. So that's number one. The next thing that I think is probably missed the most when I go recruiting, I don't see. Kids using prep step. I don't see them presenting their glove properly. So those are two things right away as a coach that I key in on. As a middle infielder myself, it's those are things I just see instantly. Okay. So let's talk about glove presentation. When your athletes put their glove on the ground, most of them want to go like this. They want to turn their their hand over and push their arm in the middle of their body. That just creates tension. Now I can't absorb the energy of the ball from there because my arms are stiff. They all want to go like this. Okay, I, I try to teach my athletes thumbs up. When I, when I move to the ball, when I present my glove, I want my wrist cocked. So this part of my glove right here is facing the ball. I call that the kill spot. I want to. I want to kill the ball right there. I want to stop it. Okay. When I don't do that, when I have my wrist like this, and move my hand over, I start feeling balls off of here, and the ball rattles around in the glove. How many of you see that happening all the time, right? Okay. How many of you get those balls that roll up off the heel, right? If I get here, off my wrist, this is probably off my left chest. Okay, my thumbs are up, so I'm probably, I try to work from 1 o'clock to 7 o'clock. That's my position. Okay, cocked wrist, kill spot facing the ball. All right, this, going 12 to 6, creates a lot of tension. Changes the glove position, everything changes. Okay, now the ball's running into me, I can't absorb anything. Okay, so those are the first two things probably that need to be corrected right away. Um, I think without those two, fielding becomes much more difficult and then you're just kind of fighting an uphill battle teaching your kids how to field the ball clean, how to absorb the energy of the ball, move through it, make a good throw. How many of your athletes do you see, they catch a ball, rattles around a little bit, so then their timing is all goofy and the throw is just struggle to make a good throw. Yeah. Fielding is balance, timing, and rhythm. That's it. Okay, and if I don't have those early pieces, all those things change. Okay, so prep step, glove presentation, making sure we're in a good natural position right here instead of trying to turn our hands over like this. Okay. This part is critical. The cocked wrist. Alright. This changes everything. Now this is now this becomes the kill spot. Here, this is the kill spot right there. I can stop the ball. Okay. The other part I would say um, that 
that I see a lot that makes fielding really, really hard is the depth of their glove. Most of them want to field balls back here. Okay? You want them to field out in front of them, out here, where they can see the ball. An easy, quick, easy drill that you can do with them uh, just when you have them on their knees, fielding balls, rolling from their partners. Just have them put a hat in their mouth. Okay. I can't, if I have this here, I can't see any of that. Does that make sense? Okay, I just give them a little, put a hat in their mouth. They gotta get, they're gonna have to get out there in front of themselves to see their glove, see the ball. Field it. Okay. Um, most fielders that I see like to field it kind of between their feet. And then all the, the footwork patterns, all that stuff suffers, it goes away. Okay, so, um, prep step, glove presentation, getting the ball out front. Okay, there's our, kind of our basics. Um, I think the next piece is probably teaching them how their feet work as they get through the ball. Okay, because most infielders that I see, especially when they're young, uh, even in high school travel ball, most of the time probably, they come up to a ball, they approach a ball really, really hard and really fast. They take these giant steps, then they stop and try to field the ball. Okay, they're not moving through the ball at all. They run and stop, field it, and then try to get going again. Okay, rhythm, timing, that's fielding. Okay, so I want to try to teach them first how their feet should work as they field the ball. Okay, so a simple drill is just getting them set up. If her and I were coming out here, if her and I were just rolling balls to each other, if she's rolling balls at me, okay, I would be set up with my, my toes up. See, I go heel to toe as I field the ball, moving through it, I get it centered. You're going to see your kids want to do this a lot. Swing the ball across, right? I want to funnel it into the center of my chest, right there. When they play catch, what's the first thing they do when they catch the ball before they throw it? Catch it, the first thing they do is go like this, with every player. So when they field the ball, they want to swing it around and Okay. So just get them set up, toes up, catch, funnel it to the center of the chest, teach them that rhythm right there. Okay. And then from there, you can start to get in your footwork patterns. Uh, it's a two-step pattern or a four-step pattern. Or uh, a lot of my athletes, I, I use uh, shuffle or two shuffle because they just understand that better. Um, which is simply bang, shuffle, make my throw. That's a two-step pattern. Four step is just two shuffles. Catch, shuffle, shuffle, make my throw. Okay, they've got to learn that. Um, how many are, are, where do you guys play? Third base. Third base? Okay. Um, How often do you feel like you field the ball sometimes and it just throws off because you feel out of whack, right? That's that's timing. That's the rhythm piece. When you feel the ball and you take that first step, your upper body and your lower body aren't in sync yet. That's why you take that second shuffle. Or that's why I sometimes, if, if I've got someone with speed and I can only use a two-step pattern, I have to know the timing and the rhythm of that two-step pattern. Okay, if it's someone super fast, I've got to be able to use my two-step pattern in a way that gets me synced back up. Okay, or I may have to slow that down to get synced up. Okay, if I got someone that's not so fast, I'll almost always use a four-step pattern because that's what allows my upper body and lower body to catch up to each other. And then the throw becomes a million times easier.
okay? And just when you're training your athletes, make them use the four step pattern, okay? Because it'll, they'll start to feel what it's like to have their body in sync to throw. And their throws will change. They'll be a lot more comfortable throwing the ball, a lot more accurate they'll start to get a feel for where their body is at when they throw the ball. So then when it's time for them to use a two-step pattern, they'll be able to sync up better. They'll be able to change the rhythm of that two-step pattern and get in sync. Okay, so, um, and you can do that on uh, backhand stuff as well. If you're working your backhand thing, same thing. Heels up, I'm loaded up here, I catch that backhand get a center move through the ball okay I can use it on my glove side or I am here toes up catch come through make my make my pivot to wherever I'm throwing okay um, so to add to the, that part the footwork getting the ball in your glove getting it secure getting it center of chest time to throw okay I'm sure when I've got to throw it now, when I get it center of chest, here's here's an issue that I see a lot. Sorry, I'm dying now. <laughs> it was cold, not so much anymore. Yeah. So uh, <clears throat> when I get center of chest, all right. What I see a lot of is athletes. They swing the ball here, and then their hand comes out like this. Okay. And then when they start their turn, the ball is facing the sky. And they either let it go here and sky a ball, or they throw at that 12 o'clock slot and spike it to their first base. How often does that happen? A lot? Okay. So teach them when they get the ball center, center of chest, okay, they funnel the ball in, they're working through. When this foot comes down to throw, there's my move. Hands on top of the ball. See the V in my arm? I want to keep that V there with that ball just above my shoulder. That's their throwing position. Okay, and from there, I'm throwing 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and 3 o'clock. Okay, and 3 o'clock isn't sidearm. I don't want them to do this. 3 o'clock is that ball. Um, having to come on the run across the infield and do one of these on it. I'm still in this same position, I'm just bent over at three o'clock. Okay, but they've got to work on those arm slots when they're playing catch, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, get used to that arm slot. Okay, but when they take the ball out, separate right here. Hand on top of the ball, ball's facing the ground the whole time. Okay, V in my arm, ball's above my shoulder. When I get to that one o'clock slot, that's when it comes up, or down through the ball. Okay, that part's simple. They can just, and have them use that stuff, especially when, if we're an iron playing catch, we're warming up. I'm using that, especially at my shorter distances. Okay, I'm catching everything from her, getting right here, making that throw. Okay, working those arm slots. Because too often, warming up just becomes this. Right? So as an infielder, I want to, that's my time to get my feet moving, get my arm patterns right, get my body moving the right way through the ball. That's how I get prepared to start my practice. Guys, they're, they're, they're just throwing back and forth catching. That's not to do, and you must, but warming your arm up. But I got a million other things I got to get warmed up that I don't want to wait until coach is hitting balls at me to warm up. Okay, so I can do all that prep work playing catch. Okay, so prep step. Um, the glove uh, presentation, their feet their foot patterns and getting the ball out ready to throw. That's what we've covered so far, right? Any questions on that? I have a question. Yeah? On the arm slide, why can the team stand middle high school? Because I actually listened to the state stand straight up. Oh, yeah.
yeah. long or yeah. And the little ones I thought had to do from on the knee with the arms by kind of put out and bend over. That, There's some I can help out when they get on their feet though. They still when they get on their feet they just don't understand the whole pivot and move. They do better from the ground. Yeah, and for sure, and that's that's a great move. That's the best way to teach those kind of two o'clock and three o'clock right there. But you can do the same thing on their feet. Just make them lean onto this leg. Tilt, yeah. I mean, that's, there's no real, I guess the only other way you could really maybe force that with young kids is get a box, like a box where their foot is up there. And they'll put them in that tilt. Yeah, and most of them do. They most want to catch the ball and do this. Okay, I want to, I want to try to stay in posture as much as I can. Um, so when I get into my my prep step, there's my posture right there for me. Okay, when I when I attack balls, when I take my angles, this doesn't change. Okay, if I've got to go here, my posture stays there. I want to work. I, I don't want to have to work to the ground this much. I want to work to the ground that much. So I'm, I'm always working from the ground up. Okay, once I stand, I've got to make a whole nother move. Okay, about the only time I'll stand up, if I'm a shortstop, you know, maybe a second baseman, those balls real deep in the hole, where I've got to get moving, I may have to stand up to get to top speed, get to where I need to be. But most times I'm, I'm staying in posture when I move the balls, okay? Um, but as far as forcing that angle, you know, maybe a box, you know, just to get them tilted where they're like that on their feet. But the kneeling down is a great drill for that. Yeah. Um, the only other thing I've done, I did this with the, I was at Division Two for about 18 years, and I had a kid that came to me that was a really good athlete, but really, really raw. Could make every play, but did a lot of things wrong. And it, it was hard to get her to stay in posture. So, so what I did was as she moved the cross balls, I just stayed with her with a, a, a broom. And I just kept that broom over the top of her head. So when, when she stood up, she, she ran into that broomstick. You know, I mean, it's the only thing I could think of at the time. So, but it worked. I mean, got to get innovative sometimes, I guess. Uh, I've done that with catchers. Pull the stick over as they, as they come out to make the throw. Uh, any other questions on those parts so far? Middle infield. I try to you prefer them to start narrow and work wide? Because I have a lot of them, they want to get like this as soon as they get there and kind of go like this. That you don't want. For, I mean, I want my athletes, when they're young, you need to teach them probably about hip width. But as they get older, I want my athletes to be athletic for themselves. You know, some are a little bit wider and they just creep in and hop. Some stay real narrow and get out there. But that's, you know, that's college kids. I want them to be them. I'm not trying to make them be something they're not, but young, probably hip width. You know, and what you can do there is uh, um, like a, a band. Get a band around their ankle that's about that width. And they just have to keep that tension in the band and then stretch it. You know, that'll give them a, they'll feel it. And that's probably one of the biggest things. If you can find ways to get your athletes to feel what their body's doing, They'll pick it up but if there are kids that are just trying to do what you tell them to do and not really okay do this okay they're not really trying to pay attention and feel what's happening it's a long long learning process okay so things you can do bands things like that that'll make them feel that tension and get there that'll help okay anything else so far okay let's get to Infield hops. This is a big one. Let me see your ball. Okay. How many hops do you think there are? Short hop, 
long hop in between anything else? Bad hops. Bad hops. <laughs> hey, the only bad hops are the ones that you create. You you create the hop you want with your feet. That is true. Yeah, sometimes your ball hits something funky and jumps sideways. That's a bad hop for sure. But if you get the hop you want to field with your feet, okay. There, to me, there are four kinds of hops. Okay, there's the there's the short hop. So if I'm here, that's the short hop right there, right under my glove. I don't have to do anything but catch that and get it centered. Okay, here's the short in between hop, long hop, or long in between and long. Okay, so and the reason I teach that is because I, I need to be able to adjust to those hops. Like I said, the short hop's right underneath my glove. I just catch it, get it centered. Okay, the short in between is the one that I've got to go work through. And let me, let me say this, working through the ball isn't this that we see so much now. It's not that, it's that. That's it, it's really small. I stay here, I don't get like this. That creates tension, now the ball's hard again. Okay, so if I feel this short hop right there, that short in between, that's the one I'm working through. Okay, that long in between, that's the ball I come up, I see that hop, I have to give a little, create some space, get the hop I want. Again, with my feet. I want this to be my long hop. I have to create that hop. Okay, and then obviously the long hop is the long hop. It's easy. Bounces right to you. Okay, so again, feet. I come up, bang, move back through the ball. I created the hop I wanted. Okay. Um, the, uh, the other ball... <coughs> that I want to talk about is, well, I call it a snake because the ball just lays on the ground, right? So the balls that are hopping would be the ones that I would have to work through if it's not right under my glove. Okay, that push that everybody's teaching now. Okay, and it's little. It's that. It's not that big push. The snake is a lot like a short hop. I don't have to do anything to that ball but catch it, get it centered. I don't have to push through it. I don't have to do anything but receive it, get it centered, move through the ball. Okay, so start teaching your athletes those hops and like, train them with each other. Like she can kneel down, I'll give her those hops. So here's the, the short hop. It's gonna be right under her glove. Just put your glove in the dirt. Okay, that was a little more short in between. She pushed through it, short in between. There's a short right on her glove. Okay, and then there's a snake, okay, and all I'm doing, like she gives me a snake, okay, all I'm going to do is, that's it, I don't have to push through that ball, that's it, okay, I get that kind of, I'm going to push through that one, okay, and the other thing I want to touch on while we're here is, again, we talked about the kill spot, right? Your athletes are going to want to squeeze that ball. When I get balls hit at me, the glove doesn't close. Okay, if I'm on the backhand side, glove side, yeah, I got, I've got to close the glove and catch that. Or if I've got a ball in front of me that I'm just going to glove it because I'm kind of running through it, yeah, I got to squeeze that one. But the one that's at me with two hands, ball doesn't close. The glove doesn't close. Okay. If I catch it there, if I stop it on the kill spot, all I've got to do is treat this as a paddle. It's already in this hand. Okay, once I squeeze it, I get it here. Now I got to go in and get it. Okay, and you guys know how quick the softball game is and how short the field is. You don't have time to do that stuff. Okay, and when you want to start, your older kids want to start turning double plays, you can't do that. It takes too long. Okay, and it's not right anyway. We feel the balls at us just like that. Glove stays open. 
That's the paddle right there, the, the palm of the glove. Okay, this, that webbing is made for catching line drives. Even glove side and backhand side, I'm still catching it there. I'm squeezing it there. I get it in the web, it rattled around. Okay, that, that webbing is made to catch those piss rods that are hit at you, the line drives. Okay, even fly balls I'm catching here, pop-ups. Because I'm not, I don't need to squeeze that. I just want to catch and get it into my hand. Okay, so teach them to use their glove the right way. Instead of the webbing, use that that kill spot in their hand. Um, anything on the hops? I know we're moving quick, but we only got 30 minutes. Everybody good on the hops? Okay, teach them those. Those are important. Um, the other thing that I think I see a lot of is bad angles okay athletes don't take good angles so what we do a lot of is if I'm set here okay that's angle one that's two that's three that's four that's five and on the run is six okay so we work on that we get in our prep if I tell him one, it's a cross, he gets set up. Okay? If I tell him two, we prep, we open, get back through it, or we just stay on our glove side, open, pick it, and come through. Okay, three is more for the little pop up fly balls over their head. Okay, one thing I try to do as an infielder is if this gentleman here is the ball, He's right at me. I don't want to turn like this and have the ball coming over the top of my head where I can't see it. Okay, so I opened up my turn. So there's my line. I want to get that ball on either side of me. Okay, so I'm either going to open up and turn this way. My drop step is going to be here. I'm going to open up wider. Okay, now the ball's here. Where I can see it get set up, come back through it, okay? Or I'm going to open big here, now the ball is on this side of me, instead of right over my head. Okay, and then obviously, uh, four, one on that backhand side, five, same thing, so cross, set up, come back through, six is on the run. Okay, great drill, do it dry, do it without balls, Get them to start to learn the footwork pattern. Get comfortable with it. Make them get into a fielding position. Don't let them just go like this. Okay, make them get down there and work through it dry. Okay? And then once you're comfortable, you can start adding balls in. Okay, just and you can probably stand about that far away. Flip it out there. Simple, simple stuff. Their feet are going to be their best weapon. If you don't teach them to use their feet properly, they'll never feel right. It'll always be hard. It'll always rattle around. They'll struggle to make throws. Everything you can think of will start to go wrong. Feet are first. Get their feet working properly. Okay. Um, speaking of footwork, so let's say this is the line the ball comes on. When I approach that ball, now, sometimes on, on a softball field, obviously, when the ball's hit right at you, four minutes, okay, when the ball's hit right at you, you, don't, you all you can do is stand there and try to catch it. You know, when it's hit real hard. Otherwise, when that ball's hit right at me, I want to get here, okay? Now, it does two things for me. It, it, it lets me see the whole ball. It lets me see the spin and read the hop. When I stay here, all I can see is the front of the ball. It's really hard to read spin and hop. Okay, how many of you like that ball that's hit right at you? It sucks, right? Because <laughs> you can't see it. You, you don't you don't read it properly. And the other thing it does when I get there, now when I go to field that ball, I can move across, and I'm already going to my my base where I'm throwing the ball. Right? Or it gives me the momentum. Let's say I'm a shortstop 
there at first base, but I got someone trying to be slick and moving up third on me. If I'm just like this, I'm stuck. Uh, you know, but if I set up, move across the tank, I can make my turn, make a good quick throw to third base. Okay, it's all in your feet. Okay. Um, <coughs> and I cover everything. Any questions so far? No? Is this is this what you needed? Kind of this kind of info? Okay. Um, Coach, anything from you? I have a question about team stuff for the uh -huh. individual the time. Yeah. So, so a lot of times I'm working with the whole infield all by myself. Um, so any way to prevent them from I'm working with third baseman, the rest are just standing around. Like I'm keeping everybody active. Is it as simple as I'm doing something? Yep. Over here, if you're standing around, go do one of your drills. Yes, or... if you're like, come on, girls. Let's say I'm I'm over here working with third baseman. These are my middles. Who's my third baseman? Okay, me and her are working on something specific with third. So these two can be working on on their knees, working on their their three different hops: the snake, the short, the uh, the one right under their glove. They can start to work their backhand side. They can pivot over and work. So if I'm here. Um, I'm working my glove only first, then I'm working here, then I'm, I may angle up, work my hands here, I'll angle this way, work here. Okay, they can get all that work in while you're doing something else over Do there. Do y'all have any kind of like drills or things that where it's, it's not just your traditional like warm up team defense real quick, like hit a ball to you, hit a ball to you, hit a ball to you, where, or it's not specifically working in situational, but it's a drill for the yeah, there's tons of them. Um, so you can. I mean, I mean, there's all kinds of drills you can set up for them to do to each other while you're with somebody. Um, if you have some cones, some rings, things like that, you can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, one drill I like to do is I'll set up three cones, three or four cones like that, and I'll put a ball on the end one. Then I'll set up four this way, I'll set up four over here, I'll set up four over here with the ball on the ends. They'll start in the middle, they prep, they got it, they drop, shuffle to that ball, come back through. Okay, they prep again, come to that ball, come back. Okay, and they don't really pick the ball up, it stays there, it's just a visual. Okay, same thing here, like that ball, this one here, they can either step over the cones and move across, or they can take that one more kind of on the run. Okay, where it's just footwork patterns for them, and they don't need anybody there. As long as you trust them that they're doing it right. <laughs> <coughs> and you were saying, like if you're <coughs> trying to implement your whole infield when you're hitting ground balls, so if, okay, I'm not hitting balls to third base and she's going to the third. Hit it to third, turn and go to play. Hit it to third, maybe uh, second to home. So you put everybody in the cycle so you're not all just standing around. So you can do that on the infield too to keep, them, to keep everybody moving. Whether it's double play, whether it's second to home or third with a tag and back to home. So everybody's moving and everybody's yeah, moving. Even if I tell them, hey, if I start talking to this one, go do a drill. If they start standing around for longer than 20 seconds, they're done. How old are they? High school. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have a phone in their hand or I'm not giving them directions. They don't know what yeah. to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's, a, here's a quick infield pattern you can use with your whole team. Okay, just write this down. Third to second, short to first. Okay, so I'm hitting the ball at third baseman. She's turning it to second. They make the double play. Then I hit a ball to short. She throws to first. So you need to have a couple first basemen, that kind of thing. Okay, third to second, short to first. I'll go through that a few times. Then it's third to first, short to second. So now third baseman has their balls to one, short stops turn into double play. Okay, then it's first to third, second to short. Okay, then it's second to first, first to second. So they're all getting all the work they need all at the same time. And if you want to add your pitchers in there, you can just whatever on any of those rotations you just tell the pitchers that you're going one okay they're trying to go three this run turn and double play okay can you say it one more three to two third to second 
Jordan's first. Okay. Third to first, Jordan's second. A lot of stuff on kind of double play series, uh, mass bunt drill stuff where you're just rolling balls out. So if you got, if you want any of that, so I'll give you anything I've got. Could you give them your email address? If you I, want them to contact yeah, you. I, I, yeah. Um, my my work email is showaltertf. So it's S H O W A L T E R T S at App State A P P S T A T E dot E D U. Is that on the website? Yeah. And anything I have, I mean, I've got 26 years worth of crap in my office. You know, binders for days with 